Uh, lots of people have been asking uh, us about our take on the Lancet Commission Dementia Prevention Report, uh, which hit the headlines of all the national newspapers. 45% of dementia is preventable. This is a massive underestimation. We are actually shocked uh, by this report because two of the single biggest evidence-based risk factors, and that is lowering homocysteine with B vitamins and omega-3, has actually been ignored. I mean, literally ignored. And this is the third report, 2017, 2020, 2024. We have sent to the authors of this study and the lead author, Professor Jill Livingston, all the papers, all the evidence. And by the way, this is not just sort of some crackpot uh, group. Uh, the biggest meta-analysis um, on Alzheimer's prevention in the world uh, concluded that the single most evidence-based and promising intervention was lowering homocysteine with B vitamins, which has reduced shrinkage of the brain by 73% compared to placebo and reduced the clinical dementia rating by three times that of any medication. So this is a massive hard hitter. And then omega-3. In fact, a recent study showed that um, the combination of high homocysteine and low omega-3 increases risk of dementia by 4.7 times. I mean, the, understand that this... This is bigger than any single factor covered in this report, which is 14 factors. There used to be 12, 40% uh, risk reduction, they said in 2020, and now um, there's 14. I'll talk about those other two, cholesterol and effectively um, cataracts. But homocysteine B vitamin is not even mentioned, simple as that. And then in a, in a section that says insufficient evidence, they refer to one study only on omega-3 and stating that it is associated with a significant decrease um, risk of dementia of 13%, uh, which is bigger than many of the other factors in this report, and less uh, uh, decline in, in uh, or uh, less shrinkage of the brain. Now, the point is that this has been left out. Why? Because they've looked at one study. There are eight studies. I mean, really good studies that you've seen. They hit the headlines this year from the UK Biobank. I mean, really solid studies. So why look at one study and then say not enough evidence when there's very, very obviously eight studies? I mean, they're really not hard to find. And, you know, what's extraordinary is when you look at the combined effect of omega-3 being low and homocysteine being high, which was done this year by by some uh, Dutch researchers, Van Soist, they said that if you have that combination, which the majority of people do, by the way, you increase your risk of dementia by uh, four, more than four times. You quadruple your risk of dementia. And this, this is absolutely massive. I mean, bigger than any other factor. And if we just look at the two new additional factors, um, one reports that visual loss is present in 12% of people. Now understand that lack of omega-3 and B vitamins is present in half of everyone um, over 50 and many under 50. Um, and the effect of cataract extraction uh, in those people is to reduce their risk by, um, by 30%. So a small group of people who get a good effect. I mean, we don't argue with that. I think that's fantastic. But the point is, when you look at the percentage that are affected by omega-3 and B vitamins, it's, it's absolutely massive. And then when we get on to the sort of next big new one, which is cholesterol, I mean, the evidence in this report is all over the place. It's a real mess. I mean, for example, they, they refer to a very good study in, in, in Denmark, which basically says that raised cholesterol is a function of having too much sugar and a lack of veg and fish and so on. So, you know, we're not really talking here about statins. We're talking about cholesterol being a high cholesterol being a marker of bad diet. And then they look at uh, or refer to a Cochrane review saying that statins given in late life found no effect uh, on either dementia risk or cognitive outcomes. And yet this is their sort of major highlight. And I spoke to my friend Malcolm Kendrick, the cholesterol expert, and he said none of the associations reached um, a sort of doubling of risk. And the paper they based their LDL association on showed two studies where high LDL was not a risk factor and one where it was. Um, and when they weighted the studies, they managed to get a slightly beneficial effect. So he says they mix up total cholesterol and dyslipidemia, wrong fats in the blood totally, which is the game that is played to pretend the cholesterol is bad. So, you know, we've got two new risk factors which really don't add, add up. Two major risk factors completely ignored. Um, that is omega-3 and B vitamins, which if you get your homocysteine down and your omega-3 up, um, has, has the effect of 
you know, cutting your wrist by a quarter. So this is, this is very simply bad science. Anyway, we'll give you the full report uh, in a few weeks when our scientists have dissected it and we will be uh, writing to the Lancet because this is completely unacceptable um, to, to really push towards drugs and ignore the effect of what you put in your mouth. Prevention does not mean more drugs. It means tackling the root causes. Thank you.